Hi there, what I have here behind me is a TM990 computer using the TMS9900 CPU made by Texas Instruments. Now this project here isn't actually finished. I was about halfway through and I'd done something and I thought, well this is kind of cool. I'm going to spin off a separate video. Um, just to give you a little bit of an overview of what we've got here, of this uh, sort of work in progress. Back here is the TM990 CPU board. It's kind of hidden behind this board in front of it. This is the board that I was designing myself. Um, it's got RAM, it's got ROM, it's got IDE. There's a guy in the UK named Stuart who was very helpful with some designs for that that I incorporated in mine. It's got a, actually an HDMI out that we're not going to show off. It's got a couple multi-module slots. Uh, multi-module slots are something that you might have seen me talk about in the IPDS or these little kind of small index card size things that you can kind of piggyback on there. And this one here is an AY38910 um, music player. It's a three-channel music player. I recently built, this is actually the one that I built for the IPDS right here. I took it out of the IPDS, I stuck it on this, and I was getting ready to demo this. And I'm like, I've got to go write a new program to play um, AY38910 music. I had done this on the 8085 for the IPDS. Now I'm either going to have to write it in TMS9900 assembly, oh, gee, that sounds fun, or write it in another language like BASIC or FORTH. Um, and I decided, I've been doing some AI stuff lately, so why don't I try to use an AI to write this program on my vintage computer for me? Um, will that work? Can an AI do it? You know, we've seen AIs, they have code generation capabilities, it's almost all uh, the stuff that you see people generating is like Python, because that's what all the AI guys are into. So we know it generates good Python, but can you tell an AI to go, hey, write me a music player for a TMS 9900 uh, running FigForth uh, hooked up to an AY38910 sound chip in whatever obscure memory addresses I decided to connect uh, that chip. Will the AI do it? And um, I'll give you the answer uh, right up front here. I'll type uh, play, I'll spell it right, melody, play melody and we'll see if the AI was able to pull this off. Okay, so that was it. That was the program that the AI wrote to play Mary Had a Little Lamb um, in FigForth using the AY38910. Um, the AI wrote that. I didn't write that. I didn't write one single line of code that went into there. I might have helped it a little bit by telling it where it made some mistakes here and there, but it wrote the code. Now I'm going to take you over to the computer and like I say, a diversion from what we usually do, I'm going to log into a website and show you how easy it is to get an AI to write you code for your vintage computer. So even an obscure conglomeration of hardware like I've got assembled here, we'll show you how an AI can do that. Okay, here I am on a website called Poe. It's actually run by the people who run Quora, I believe. If you're familiar with Quora, it's called Poe. And you can log into this, you can actually get a free account and you can use some of these official AI bots down here. And lots of other bots that people have created on their own. You can kind of create your own bot, you can put it up here. The free account will only get you so far um, and you'll, you'll sort of run out of credits. You'll have to wait a day to type more message into it. So what I have is a paid account myself. It's like 20 bucks a month, you get a paid account. And then you've got uh, more credits, you can do more stuff. But I'm gonna show you how to use Claude to generate a vintage computer program. Um, Claude is this uh, one down here, it's by Anthropic. You click it here, and you know it tells you a little bit about it. You can see I've got a previous one going here, we'll get back to that in a minute. And then down here, you have to give it a prompt. And what the AI will respond to you with is about as good as your prompt. So I'm gonna give it a very simple prompt down here. Um, write a fourth program to play Mary Had a Little Lamb on an AY38910 sound chip. Now I haven't told it what memory location I put that chip in, I haven't told it what variant of fourth, um, I haven't told it how fast my computer is, I haven't told it any of those things. So a little bit better prompt would probably get a little bit better response than we're going to get here. But anyway, let me let me click the button and see what Claude says. You see, he's pretty quick, um, and he's written a program here, um, and 
Let's see what came out of it. So it defines some constants. This one here gave me a little bit different response than I got last time, but I did this mostly so you can just see how quickly it spits the stuff out. Um, now let me go, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through the one that I actually used to play the music at the beginning of the video. So, so every time you interact with an AI, it's gonna be a little bit different. So rather than doing this from scratch, I'm gonna show you the journey that I went on uh, to generate the, the music that played at the beginning of this video on the TM990. So I started out with that same prompt here. Write a fourth program to play Mary Had a Little Lamb on an AY38910 sound chip. And it spit out this particular program. So it declared some registers. It declared some constants for the notes. Um, it made a variable. Um, I don't know why it actually made a variable because although it stores something in that variable down here, um, it never actually references it again. So this is a little bit unnecessary there. Um, and it wrote some helper functions here. Like this one is set frequency. You give it a frequency. It does some division here. This division is out of the data sheet. Um, it actually got it a little bit wrong. You actually need to take the frequency and multiply it by 32 and then divide it into that constant. So it didn't get that quite right, but close. Um, then you send the, the low byte and you send the, the, the four, four bits of the high byte. Um, playing a note. Um, it takes, like I say, it, it stored the variable here. We, we don't know why. It called the set frequency function on the frequency that was on the stack. So it's going to set the frequency on the sound generator. Then it does some stuff with the mixer to turn on channel A, turns the volume to channel A up to maximum. And at this point, our, our note is playing. So it does a delay. This MS function uh, delays a millisecond, pops that off the stack. So it's this duration goes into that MS. So it waits a while. Then at the end of it, it turns the sound back off. Um, it's doing this by, se by sending um, bytes out to the port. So you can see here, you know, it is taking a zero byte and it's putting it at the address channel A volume and then doing a character write. There's a pause function here, which is used for when you want to just wait between notes, just calls that MS function. And then it defined Mary had a little lamb by taking the notes of the song, you know, an E4, a D4, a C4, uh, stringing them all together into a little fourth word here that plays all of the notes. And it gave me something called plain melody, which is kind of like a main function, I guess where it just calls the Mary Had a Little Lamb. So you type play, mel play melody, and in theory, it should play all this. Now, I kind of underspecified what I wanted it to do because um, I did not tell it how to talk to the AY38910. It, it kind of took a guess itself. It defined these constants for the addresses, which not quite right. We'll, we'll fix that in a minute. But it kind of assumed that these these registers were mapped to main memory, which wasn't true. And it used this MS function, which, you know, my, my fig fourth on the TM990 doesn't have that MS function. So let's go down here. You know, Claude actually tells you how the program works. And, you know, I want to know more about that MS function. I mean, we can guess it probably waits a millisecond, but we'll just ask Claude, what does it do? And Claude goes and talks about, you know, it waits a millisecond. Um, the implementation depends on the fourth system, blah, blah, blah. I tell it, my fourth doesn't have that one word. Include an MS function that's appropriate for a three megahertz computer. Um, Claude apologized. Claude apologizes a lot. Almost every time you talk to Claude, uh, Claude apologizes and goes ahead and it calculates an MS function. So where is it? Right here. Um, it did a loop from zero to 750. And it talks about that, and it, it explains how it calculated it. You know, it took the clock cycles, blah, 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 and it, it came up with 750. So I kind of saw this 750, and I kind of knew this, you know, this is a vintage computer running a fourth uh, interpreter. That's probably going to take longer than a millisecond. But like I say, we'll get there. Um, I told it, you know, because I'm using fig fourth on this TM990, so make sure it works with fig fourth. So it made some changes. It changed the format of the, the comments. So rather than a slash, it put them in parentheses. It was using, um, up here it was using an R shift function. Uh, fig fourth doesn't have that, so it got rid of the R shift function. Um, instead, it put a divide, uh, which it actually miscalculated. You know, shifting right by eight bits is not the same as dividing by eight. We'll get there, we'll fix that. Um, you know, a few things like that it did to, to make it comply with fig fourth. And then I had to explain because, you know, I have put 
my AY38910 at some specific memory addresses. I put them at, this is actually like EFEA. I, I told it decimal because it's doing this in decimal. So 61434 uh, for the register. And then um, the value uh, to 61436. I told it that. Um, it thanked me for providing the crucial information. And then it revised the routine. So it, it took and it defined my two addresses. It wrote a new function here called AY. And just like I told it to do, you know, it writes the register to this one. And then it writes the value to that one. And then it revised uh, everything else to use this AY function. So rather than writing directly to memory, it's writing through that function. Um, continuing down here, uh, most of it has not changed. You know, it's very good about explaining what it did. Now it's using this exclamation point, which writes a fourth word. I wasn't sure if this would work right or not. This is a 16-bit computer, so maybe it actually does work. But I figured, let's be safe. Let's tell it to write an 8-bit, you know, using the C exclamation rather than just exclamation. So, yeah, it changed that. It changed all of the exclamations. Where are they? So right there, it changed these two from, from exclamation to C, C exclamation. To write a character instead of write a word. Um, going, going, going. Um, I noticed these constants. Th these are not right. This here should be 0. You can, you can get that from the data sheet. This one should be one. This one is actually correct. This one I thought was wrong because the data sheet called it register 10, uh, but it was actually talking 10 octal. So I told Claude, you know, go change those to zero and one. And Claude did change those two constants to zero and one. Um, then I told it to change the volume to 10. And this is where we messed up because like I say, this was 10 octal. And I misread the data sheet and didn't clarify that. So Claude congratulated me on how right I was, apologized for, for its um, mistake, and then changed that to a 10. Like I say, that's wrong. Uh, we'll see that in a bit. And of course, it explains what it, it did. I tried this out. It was very, very slow. I mean, it took forever to play the song. So I told it to take the MS function. Uh, I told it it was like 20 times longer than it should be. So it, it took and it made it smaller. Instead of being 750, it's now 37. But then it, the, the sound was coming out was wrong. If you look in the data sheet, it says take with the frequency, multiply it by 32, and then divide it into th this big constant. And it wasn't doing the multiply by 32. So I told it, you know, I think you need to multiply the frequency by 32. Um, again, congratulated me on being right and inserted down in here someplace. Where is it? Up here. 32 times, you know, this uh, fourth is, is, is stack based. So you're taking the frequency, putting a 32 on the stack, then doing a multiply. So you multiply the frequency by 32. Then you put this on, you swap the two and you divide. It does the right thing, kind of. Uh, so it explains what it did. But somehow, somehow this R shift came back. Um, you know, I went, I pasted this in the computer and it blew up there. And it's like, where did that come back? Um, so I had to tell it, get rid of the R shift. So it fixed it and it actually did it right this time. So before it had, it had tried to divide by eight. Now it's actually dividing by 256. So it got, it got the divide right. We're getting very, very close. At this point, it would play the music but it just, it sounded off. The notes were all wrong. Um, so we have to, we have to figure this out. I'm looking at this, I'm saying my fourth is 16 bit and this number you used in there is too big. It doesn't fit in 16 bit. You know, it apologizes, um, figures out how to change it. And then it spews this out and uh, whatever this is, this, this doesn't seem, this doesn't seem good to me. And it certainly didn't work. And I'm thinking, Claude, you're going down the wrong avenue. You're, you're being too hard with this. I told it, your set frequency function's not working. Please just put the pre-computed values in the melody instead of using set frequency. So it did. It computed some constants here that are the pre-computed constants. It got rid of the set frequency and it just has a set tone, which got rid of that divide. Uh, went ahead and played this, still sounded wrong. 
Turns out these constants, the you know, I, I went to the data sheet, I checked it myself, and I'm like, that doesn't look right. So I asked Claude, I said, um, explain how you computed those tone. Um, you know, I apologize for not doing it later. Um, you know, it knows the frequency, uh, or it knows the formula to compute the frequency. It's showing how it computed each one of them. Um, it did a little bit different, you know, it's rather than doing uh, the, the 3.5 megahertz divided by 32 times the frequency, it did, you know, 1.7 megahertz divided by 16 times the frequency. Still getting the right answer here. And then, you know, it figures out that, you know, these are the constants it needs. And then it admits to an error. It says, I made a mistake in the previous response. The values I provided were not correct uh, for the 16-bit representation. So it corrected it, you know, great. And it talks about how it works. You know, I told it to update the program, spit out the program. There's the program. So at this point, we we it, it was playing the notes. It was playing it a little bit too slow. And it was not pausing between notes. And I looked at this and I, I realized that this here, this channel A volume, which is entirely my fault. Claude originally had an eight there, which was the right, right thing. And it, me, I misread the data sheet and told him to change it to 10. And like a good AI, uh, it did that. Um, so I said, you know, I admit it, you are right. Uh, channel A volume was register eight, not register 10. Please revise. Um, Claude fixed it, just changed the um, 10 to an eight. And then when I played it, it was still too slow. So I said, reduce the millisecond function by a factor of five. And it went in here and it put in 37. The 37 was originally what it had there. Then it put a five and then a multiply divide, which is like a weird hybrid fourth function that does a multiply and a divide. And I'm like, no, you could have just divided the 37 by five. You don't like have to do it in code. You just, you know, do it now. So I said, rather than using slash dark, just divide the 37 by five and use that. Um, it did, it got seven there. Now we're playing the music, but it's about half the speed it should be. So I said, change the seven to be a four. Um, we'll change the, to, to use a four instead of a seven. We get this program here. And at this point, at this point, we are done. Um, this is the program that I played at the beginning of the blog post the place Mary had a little lamb. So you can see exactly what it took to convince this AI to write this program. Several of these steps could have been optimized had I just given it the right prompt in the beginning. You know, I could have told it the speed of my uh, computer. I could have told it which fourth variant I was using. I could have told it what memory addresses the sound chip was at. and would have saved a little bit. So when I go to do one of my sort of hobby projects here again in the future, I may again use AI uh, to help out with the coding because although it was some work correcting the AI's mistakes, it probably would have been more work uh, writing this out myself. And let's face it, when I write code, I make a few mistakes too. So all in all, this was a good deal. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you saw some, some cool things that you can do with AI. And I'll leave you with one more rendition of uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.